for joining us today in this webinar. We are going to be talking about random versus systematic failures. What are their issues and what can we do about them? What are some solutions? A little housekeeping, first of all, there is a Q&A tab or a questions tab on your panel. It should be on the right side of your screen. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to type those in. At the end, I'll leave a little time at the end to answer any questions. Also, there will be a recording of this session emailed or available on the Exeter website and the Exeter YouTube channel. And a copy of the slides will be emailed to you later on this week. Today we're mostly going to be talking about random and systematic failures, what they are and why there is confusion and why there are problems with them. After reviewing and studying a lot of actual field failures in plants over several years, many engineers have realized that all failures have significant consequences. The classification of random or systematic is not relevant or necessarily useful. All failures that prevent a safety function from performing the protection function should be counted in field failure rate analysis for dangerous failures. At the time, many at the same time, many failures present present an opportunity to improve the safety of the plant and the reliability of the plant. Every failure should be reviewed to see if a practical environment can be implemented. Many engineers understand that to improve safety and achieve realistic failure rates, you must have all failures be counted in failure rate analysis and all failures must be reviewed to determine if failures can be prevented in the future by taking practical actions. A little bit about me. My name is Lauren Stewart. I'm a CFSP. I started my engineering career in custom design and manufacturing and now I work with Exeta focusing on their mechanical customers. I do product certification, audits, um, FMEDAs, and I also am a part of our research team here. And we, I have researched stiction and mechanical failure rate comparisons, the 2H database, and random versus systematic failures. We have offices all over the world, so no matter where you are or your customers are, we have someone close by. We were really surprised and proud to show, see a study done by the ARC in November of last year that Exeter um, has the majority in the process industries of certificates. Um, and that's with all other functional safety organizations combined. So we are very proud of that fact. We also like to publish anything that we research in white papers. We have all of our processes um, published in books. We like to be a complete open book. So whatever we have researched or our process or however we can make a world a safer place, we try to make sure that that information is readily available to anyone. We can be divided up into main products and service categories. So no matter what you need in functional safety, whether it's your process, your products, or your people, we have some a category to help you. We have consulting and engineering tools. We have product certification and training and reference materials and professional certification. So let's concentrate on random versus systematic failures now. 
So we're going to start with what is the definition of random and systematic failures. We're going to look at some real fa failure classification examples and we're going to look at field failure data analysis and then what did we take away from this webinar. Some background on the random versus systematic debate before we even look at the definitions are those were terms that were created by standards committee members to describe device failures in a safety instrumented function according to some underlying cause. There was a common consensus in the committees that it was not practical to use probabilistic analysis on all the things such as software or other design mistakes. So these were all considered and called systematic and given that title. And therefore they're not to be counted in any failure rate analysis. When failure rate analysis results are compared by by our research team here at Exeter, we've uncovered so several problems and those same problems keep reoccurring. Well, first of all, some systematic failures are reoccurring failures and are made again and again or even after the fix has been made, whether that fix brought along another problem or that fix wasn't really the solution. So that's one thing that we um, uncovered. The next thing was failure rates for the same device were very different from site to site and that's not just um, the same type of device. We're talking about the exact same device. Also the same failure rate or the same failure was classified differently by different people and this could be one site said that this failure was random to count it. The next site would say this failure is systematic, it's not counted, and some people didn't even think it was a failure at all. It definitely don't count it. And this isn't just from site to site that this definition of a failure differed. It was actually it wasn't just manufacturer to manufacturer. It could have been the same company with different sites that um, define it differently. So that was a major issue. And then finally, the failure rates from some sources were order of magnitude lower than others. For the same, the same product or the same type of products. So we tried to come up with some ideas on how to take away these problems. But to understand them more, we're going to look at um, further look into what is a random failure and what is a systematic failure. To do that, we're going to look at the definitions of random and systematic given by IEC along with if we think that they're working or not. So IEC 61508, the 2010 edition, had different definitions for random and systematic hardware failures. So they define the random failure as a failure occurring at a random time which results from one or more possible degradation mechanisms in the hardware. Well, we can kind of understand why not everybody knows what a random failure is with that definition. It's certainly not a black and white definition. It's, there's a lot of room for interpretation. There's a lot of gray areas that are involved in that definition. So taking a look at systematic um, failure definition, we see that it is a failure related in a deterministic way to a certain cause which can only be eliminated by a modification of the design or of the manufacturing process or operational procedures or documentation or other relevant factors. So that definition when compared to the random 
um, failure definition is better, but it's still not great. There, we can absolutely understand why different sites have would consider the same thing, the same failure differently. In um, so as you can understand, they are those both definitions are not mutually exclusive and have confused many engineers. Even many functional safety engineers where their job is 100% functional safety, it can um, be confusing and functional safety engineers don't necessarily agree on what a certain failure can be classified as. In the IEC 61511, the 2016 um, definite the 2016 edition came up with a more, um, a better um, definition with a little more clarity and they say that a systematic failure is a failure related to a pre-existing fault which consistently occurs under a particular set of conditions and then the same as before which can only be eliminated by removing the fault by modification of design, manufacturing process, operating procedures, documentation, or other relevant forces, factors. So once, like I said, that was definitely a step in the correct direction, even, but even the improved definition, they're not mutually exclusive, and that makes it hard to put a failure in one category or the other. But we started to wonder, perhaps the committee intended that, Wait, do some failures belong in both categories? So what we did, we created a survey of actual, real-life field failures. And we sent it out through ISA and did a survey to see what the participants thought that each category um, would be. So we're going to take a look at a few of those questions as real life examples to see what we think the survey, um, the failures could be classified as. So the first example here, we have a failure occurred when a de-energized to trip remote actuated valve closed and shut down the process during normal operation. The failure was traced to the PLC logic solver braided to a 50 degrees C, where an output module failed de-energized. A component in the output module, a transistor, had failed in such that it could no longer conduct current. The ambient temperature was hot, it was 55 degrees C that day. An x-ray of the transistor showed a burned out bond wire likely due to environmental electrical overstress was the issue. Should this failure be categorized as random or systematic? Now in your panel, I'm going to do a poll. I'm going to present the question and you can answer it in your panel. I do not know if people vote which way anybody voted. It's not attached to your name. It doesn't matter. This is just to show the difference of opinion and to see if we all have the same idea if this is a random failure or if this is a systematic failure. Okay, a lot of people voted. Thank you for those who did. I'm going to close the polls now and I'm going to show you our results from this question. So as you can see, 29% of you thought that this was a random failure and 71% said, well, this is a systematic failure. So I'm going to show you our survey. Oh, let me close this out, sorry. There we go. I'm going to show you our survey results 
so that you can see what everybody that we surveyed through ISA believed. As you can see, there was, I would say, roughly 25% said random and 75% said it was a systematic fault. So what is it? Well, the big clue in here was an x-ray of the transistor showed a burned out bond wire likely due to electrical overstress. So the first question we want you to ask, would this failure still have occurred if the temperature was 45 degrees instead of 55 that day? Well, yes, the failure was caused by an electrical overstress. So the next question, if this failure was classified as systematic and not included in the failure count, would that count be considered optimistic? Could it put a failure rate into a dangerous um, category? Well, yes, the calculated dangerous failure rate would be then too low. So let's look at why. So here at Exeta, we would consider this a random failure. However, there is a systematic issue uncovered by this failure report that should not be ignored. No product should be used outside of its specified operating limits. At this site, there appears to be a problem with either the engineering procedures used to check the environmental ratings of the equipment against the expected environment. When the PLC was specified, either the engineer did not know the site temperature could reach 55 degrees C, or the PLC rating was not checked. The procedure for checking this device environmental specifications should be upgraded, or perhaps the procedure for categorizing the site environments needs to be improved. Until some effective action is taken, failures due to this environmental overstress are expected. So this is one of those examples where you could put the failure in both the random and the systematic category. It needs to be in the random category so that the fail it is counted as a issue in the um, failure rates and it is counted as a dangerous failure in the field failure analysis but it would, could count as a systematic issue so that you take into consideration these issues so they do not keep occurring. So once again we're going to do a poll and look at this next example. A maintenance technician routinely checks and adjusts the trip point on a motor shutdown relay. The procedure for checking and adjusting the relay are correct. All personnel were trained in this procedure. A failure occurred when a mistake was made with the adjustment. The trip point was set too high and the motor was not shut down to maintain safety. So let me go ahead and open up the polls and you can think should this failure be categorized as a random or systematic failure? Okay, a good percentage of you, most of you have answered, thank you. I'm going to go ahead and share these results. So as you see, once again, the small group of us attending the webinar could not come to an agreement whether this was random or systematic. 69% said random, 31% said systematic. So I'm going to go ahead and hide this and we're going to look at the results from the survey sent out. So in this case we have over 10 maybe 15 percent 
of the ceramide participants said that this was a random failure. 55% um, ish looks like that they said this was a systematic and more than 30 I'm not sure if it was 35 but more than 30 percent actually said that this was not a failure this would not count so let's look at why it should be what it is first of all we want to look at what pre-existing fault has occurred well there's not necessarily a clear pre-existing fault. This maintenance worker was given the correct procedures and is well trained. So what happened? Well, sometimes people make random errors. Humans are humans. I know I make errors and we can't assume that everybody is going to be 100% correct 100% of the time maybe he was having a bad day or maybe something happened or he at home and he was still thinking about it or maybe he was in a hurry to get out of work because he had something going on after work and he was rushing and not thinking clearly that mistakes happen and that's part of life so then we want to ask what procedure could be enhanced well, some people might argue that a new procedure is needed where a second person checks every adjustment every time. And when the maintenance budget is double, these changes can be made. But until then, this failure must be still counted as a dangerous field failure. So until there is a new procedure, established and it is proven that it works this needs to be counted as a random failure and this should clearly be included in any failure rate used for probabilistic analysis at this site and we're not saying that you need to double your maintenance budget that you need to have a buddy system and have someone double check every single person's work in most places that's unrealistic to assume that that could even happen so what we are saying is count this as a random failure if you are not going to take the extra steps to do the double checking or the buddy system and that's fine but just make sure you include this in your field failure returns or your field failure analysis Okay, um, this is going to be our last example. So during a proof test, it was discovered that a float type level transmitter was stuck in position. However, just a light tap resulted in the transmitter giving the correct reading. Once again, I'm going to open up the polls and ask, should this be categorized as a random or systematic failure? Okay, go ahead. Okay, a large number of you have submitted your answers. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and share these. There we go. As you can see, this was pretty split. 53% said random, 47% said systematic. And just so you know, we know that these questions are tricky. We know that a lot of them could be looked at either way, and that's why we are using them as examples. You are definitely not wrong if you picked random or if you picked systematic. It just goes to show um, why using these words and these categorized can be quite confusing. So once again, we definitely did not agree or come to one decision in this webinar. So I'm going to hide the results and take a look at what the survey said. Well, here, over 60% said random failure. 
over 30% said systematic failure, and over 5% said that this isn't a failure, it should not be counted as anything. So what should we take a look at? Well, you, the portion to look at here is that it was during a proof test and the transmitter was stuck in the position. A light tap resulted in the correct reading. So there are arguments for the systematic classification because the float level transmitter did not have adequate reliability for this application and also in the system systematic um, cap or argument you have an incorrect design solution but there are also arguments for a random classification because there's no evidence of any systematic issue If you go ahead and do a root cause analysis so for this failure and you investigate it further, you can show ways to eliminate or reduce this failure. And if those improvements are effectively implemented and the failure count goes down in future, future site failure analysis, then you can then count it or not count it in your failure analysis after the improvement has been made and that failure is no longer occurring. However, many sites and operations don't have the capability or the time to do root cause analysis. So this failure might continue. It might keep happening. So in any case, the failure should be included in the failure count, it was a real failure that may have failed to initiate the safety function. And if you do go through the entire root cause analysis and you find out why this was happening and you correct that mistake and you go through and you realize and have evidence that this mistake is no longer happening because you fixed it, then you do not need to necessarily count it in your failure rate um, and in the field failure analysis. In the survey, there was not a single example of the 16 examples given that everyone agreed on. And it's very clear that different people interpret failure reports differently. And it's also clear that the results would eliminate many dangerous failures from the analysis and that can result in optimistic failure rates. A systematic failure will cause an increase of probability of failure on demand just like a random failure as particular conditions can be modeled the same way. Thus, it is essential that all failures be included in failure rate analysis. And remember, systematic failures will continue to occur until they are effectively addressed by design changes, by process improvements, or better training, or better documentation, or better review, or better testing, there's many ways to combat systematic failures and they will keep happening and should be counted until you have properly addressed the failures. So what we are suggesting is maybe don't call them a random failure or call them a systematic failure. Don't use the labels because they are confusing there is room for interpretation, there are gray areas. Instead, think of it as should you count it now or should you count it now until you are certain this won't happen again or we've already made addressed this issue, we have evidence that it will not happen again and 
at this time we no longer need to include this in our field failures. So it should always be the objective of any failure data collection program to collect all of the information and all of the failures and count all realistic failures. Every failure should also be examined to see if there's any improvement or opportunity for a systematic improvement. So we suggest you treat all failures as random and count them but also treat all failures as systematic and look for room for improvement to make your process safer. Um, all of these slides, this whole webinar, was based off of a white paper, so if you want more detailed explanation or see more examples, you can go to our website and download the white paper. It is free for everyone. All right, now I will go ahead and look at questions, if there were any questions. And if you think of questions later, please feel free to email me and I will answer them as quickly as I can.